all service except two things I need to let you know about. Um, the first one is our orchestra here, Janet, is going to play all the hymns. We've not got Sue's magic device that makes people come in like whole choirs and orchestras and sing in here. What we're doing is you're listening, Janet's playing, and I'm going to use the hymns as a kind of prayer on your behalf. So I will say the words, think of them as a prayer, because hymns have several different purposes. Obviously they're for worship, thanksgiving, praise, they're also for teaching. They have some theological input, so uh, the words themselves have meaning, but also they're an act of prayer. So we're going to use them as an act of prayer, because our service this morning is going to be focusing around prayer. Um, and the other thing is, uh, when we come to the, uh, the actual uh, distribution of the communion, um, it's a very narrow thing here. I'm, I'm hoping Frank's going to help out here. He's right at the back. And if he, if he walks up, I should come around and stand about here. So you, you won't have folded up. In fact, it'll probably come to you. And uh, then if you come and stand about here, I think most of you know the drill. I'll hold a wafer for you and uh, drop it into your outstretched hands. Yes, Frank? Yeah, I, I agree with that, but there's just quite a lot of us today, so it might be more difficult to get around. Um, let's have a think. Yeah, okay, we'll do that, Frank, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be a little quicker because there's not that many of us, is there? Okay, then. Let's have a few moments, and uh, then if you feel able to stand, we'll start the service. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sorry, the Lord Jesus, sorry, Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you that we can worship you, not simply as the crucified Christ, but as our risen Lord and Saviour. We praise you that death was not the end, but new beginning, not simply for you, but for us. During this Easter time, we praise you for the time of joy, thanksgiving, rejoicing, a time that speaks of victory, renewal and hope. Amen. Amen. Now our opening hymn is I'm building a people of power and Janet's going to play and I shall read the words. So do please sit down. When you're ready. seating again we come to our confession. Now this is a time of penitence of course so we'd like you to think back over the past few days anything that you really think you shouldn't have done but did and those things that you know you really should have done but haven't and of course anything else about your person any habits anything like that you need, feel you need to bring before our Lord now so let's just have a few moments of quiet to think on those things. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes 
as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help, help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. And now, I'm going to, on your behalf, read another prayer. <laughs> this one is the Gloria. And this is the one we, the usual one from communion. But I, I think the words work. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Bit of technology coming in. Checking the texts. Our collect for today. Risen Christ. Your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And now we come to our reading. So we're going to start with the book of Acts. So that's uh, Christine. She's going to stay where she is. So if you want to swivel your heads around and have a look, you can. A reading this morning comes from page 117 of the New Testament section of the Bible, and it's from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, starting at verse 26. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace Queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Ephesus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Jackie is going to bring us our second reading. Thank you, Jackie. Second reading, John 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear 
Sorry, Jack, I'm not aiming this at you, but you've read the gospel before the lesson, uh, because the lesson was from one John. So what I'll do is I'll read that in a minute. But we've got a we've got a hymn now. So our hymn um, is I am the line. Oh yeah, you're not that young, right? The wife, um, and that uh, that we're going to do the same process. Yes. I'll take my mask off. You are the vine. We are the branches. Keep us abiding in you. You are the vine. We are the branches. Keep us abiding in you. Then we'll grow in your love. Then we'll go in your name that the world will surely know that you have power to heal and to save. You are the vine, we are the branches. Keep us abiding in you. To save looking up the, uh, all the stuff in the, in the Bible and finding it, I'm gonna just quickly look it up on my telephone. <laughs> and what I'm doing is just, just a few things, and welcome to a new month. A new month can be a new hope. A new hope, like Star Wars 4. Although it was the first one, I've always been confused with that. Right, let's see. So it's 1 John, for seven to the end. And I think these are important words for us. And, um, so please do not mind me doing this. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Well, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So that we have known and believe that the love that God has for us God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us this day, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out fear. 
For fear has to do with punishments, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. More technology. I, I need this because Sue emailed her, uh, her notes to me this morning. And I'm going to read a bit. Um, this is a short story that she was going to read to start off her uh, address, her talk. And it goes back to the reading that uh, Jackie gave us from St John's Gospel. Let us imagine that God is a gardener. And in God's garden there is a plant, a vine. The vine is rooted in the soil, and the soil is rich and nutritious, full of God's goodness. The gardener pours all his love into it, so the vine has plenty of water and food, and everything else it needs to grow well. There are many branches on the vine. Some have fruit, some do not. God cuts off the branches that are dry and weak and have no fruit. Then he looks at the branches that are fruitful and cuts those branches back so that they will bear even more fruit. Jesus is like a vine. We are the branches. If the branches stay firmly attached to the roots of the plant, they can draw on the goodness in the soil and produce sweet, juicy grapes. If we abide in Jesus and stay as close to him as the branches of the vine, we will grow well. Jesus will give us all the nourishment we need and will produce wonderful fruit like love, kindness and helpfulness. Jesus says that if we abide in him, we can ask for whatever we want and it will be done for us. Well, I tried that once, asking for whatever I wanted. I was about uh, five, I think, and I was living in Dagenham. Who knows Dagenham? Yeah, Albert Street just off the Heathway. It's a little triangle of grass between our house and the Heathway. Albert Street went on and round the corner and eventually come to Albert Street School, where I used to work many years ago. But this was before that. And uh, I'd heard from somebody, probably my cousin Jane, who was always trying to tell me things to show off her knowledge, because she was about six months older than me. She still is, by the way. That hasn't changed. Anyway, so I thought to myself, prayer. She says, God will give us anything we pray for. And for some reason, don't ask me why I wanted this, for some reason, what I wanted was a very big articulated petrol lorry with a huge tanker on the back. And it had to be Essa. Who remembers Essa? <laughs> it had to be Essa. So there's me, and I've got up, it's, oh, we were living in my granddad's house, by the way. So we had to have special terms to use the toilet. We twin with another toilet. Don't think about quantum entanglement, whatever you do, while you're in there. Anyway, I'm up there in my granddad's toilet, and I'm thinking, oh, pray. <laughs> I'm the toilet. <laughs> anyway, I'm praying, Lord, if you're there, give me a big tank of lorry that I'll find when I come downstairs and look through the front room window. And so after I've finished and cleansed myself in the appropriate manners, I ran down those stairs, like a little whippet of it, straight down the stairs, into the living room, looked out the window, nothing. There was a triangle of grass, the houses on the other side of the heathway, and there was the Evers. Who knows what the Evers are? The Evers. Who knows what the Evers are? The Evers. Like the flower, isn't it? Hey? No, obviously not. Nobody who really comes from Dagenham, do they? The Evers were the evergreens that they used as hedgerows round the gardens, the front gardens, that we used to push each other into on the way to and from school. Yeah, don't worry, Evers. So, didn't work, did it? <laughs> and the problem is that we as Christians, we, we, we often say things like that, which we know full well. That's not the entire story. If we, if we think about that little story that Sue selected for us this morning, that last promise is attached 
to everything that comes before it. Now, if I was truly a powerful Christian man, or one of the old prophets, and I'd asked for that tanker, it would have probably appeared, but I probably wouldn't have asked for it in the first place. And this is the point, that if we just ask for what we want without being truly connected to the vine, we're not really asking for anything that is appropriate to the life of the church and to the goodness of this world. So what, when Jesus and John and others, Paul, talk about prayer, they're not talking about us talking to a, a benevolent grandfather, like my grandfather, Blake, who we were living with then. Actually, he wasn't that benevolent. He was a bit more like the Old Testament granddad. He used to sit there with his waistcoat open in the middle, his hands there, and we weren't allowed to go even near his chair. And his bedroom door was always shut and locked. Anyway, so prayer is about the way we have a relationship with God. It's not about talking to God, although I'm sure we all do that. Um, on the way here, um, I, I have several prayers I use when I'm driving. Um, before I came here, I did uh, a more liturgical type prayer at home. Um, and uh, liturgy is what we're using here. This is our liturgy. Liturgy is how we put words together to use for a church service or for forms of prayer. There's more what we call extemporary prayer, where we're still talking to God. Philip is brilliant at extemporary prayer. It just flows out of him. Like the spirit is moving through his mouth. You know. Butterflies coming out. It's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. It lifts people. But there's another kind of prayer, and this is one that's much more difficult. It's, all, it's always easy to talk to someone and tell them what you want or how you feel. Well, it's easy up to a point. What's not easy is the listening bit. And with us as Christians, we're living in a busy, world, even under COVID, we were keeping ourselves busy, weren't we, doing things. We like to think of doing things as being activity. Sometimes just being is activity. And in just being, sometimes we get the replies that we need for our prayers. So if prayer is a relationship, it has to be two-way. Going back to uh, the wonderful reading from um, the Epistle of St. John, First Epistle of St. John, he come across this, this understanding and this experience that God's love was real. As real as the temple that was soon to be destroyed in Jerusalem. As real as the ground he walked on. As real as his supper. And that this was a, 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 such an important part of his relationship with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. And that's what we as a Christian church should be aiming for, is that this is a two-way relationship. God gives us love, but also gives us guidance and strength and power and authority and many other things. The prayer is not one way. Prayer has to be two-way. The problem is, is making our listening skills strong enough to hear what the Lord's saying. And of course he doesn't say it in sound vibrations all the time. But sometimes he'll give you a response through somebody else. Sometimes you're praying about something and somebody will say something to you and you'll think, ah, that's what I was looking for. So sometimes God does speak to you, but through another person. Sometimes God will speak to us <coughs> through this. In particular, the Psalms. Jesse and I were talking about the Psalms yesterday and how wonderful the Psalms are. They're a way of prayer. Read them out loud. We don't do enough of that in the Church of England. The Psalms are a method of prayer. They're a method of worship. They're a method of complaining, of moaning. They're a method of showing your fear. And they're a way of showing your anger. Sometimes at God himself. And in the Psalms you have all that. Our relationship with God in prayer has got to be an ongoing thing. 
we have never, ever got there because we haven't finished our lives. It's like reading a novel. You can't say you've read the novel until you've read the last page. You can't just read the last page and say you've read the novel either. You've got to read the bits in between. And that's what life is, and that's what our relationship with God is, and that's what prayer is. But just as a few bits of uh, advice for you to try out, if you haven't tried them. Um, one type of prayer I've been doing for some years now, I use quite often when I'm walking, or when I'm working on something, even doing the washing up, and that's what we call the Jesus Prayer. It's an Orthodox prayer that predates the Catholic Church and goes right back to the uh, early centuries of Christianity. And the Jesus Prayer is simply repeating a certain phrase. And the phrase usually starts with Jesus Christ, Son of God. Then you can add to that whatever you may be on your mind. Jesus Christ, Son of God, keep my mum healthy. Son of Jesus Christ, Son of God. And you can use that while you're doing something else because you just repeat it over and over. And it started off as a pilgrim prayer that people use when they were walking. Another form of prayer is to actually turn to something like Psalms and simply to read them very, very slowly, dwelling on each line and thinking, what does this line mean to me? Does it mean anything? And then moving on. You find a line that means something to you, say it over again, say it out loud. Listen to it in your own head as you say it. If you want any advice on prayer, then Sue and I, uh, we're, uh, we're kind of professional prayers. <laughs> we've, we've been on a course, you know. <laughs> and uh, there are others. I mean, obviously, I, I mentioned Phil, and I know, I know from experience, um, when Phil's been leading prayer, and I'm sure you've in church experienced, that he has very many ways of praying. And uh, talk to each other about prayer. So I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to have a prayer. <laughs> so let's pray. <laughs> Loving Father, we know that you hear us when we pray, and we are people of faith. We know that our words come to you. We know that you hear the hidden messages behind them. We know that you can read our hearts. What we need, Lord, is for you to help us to hear your prayers coming back to us, your responses, your love, coming into our hearts, that the relationship we have with you may truly become a relationship and not just us talking at you. We pray this in the name of the true figure of love, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. 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 Uh, we've got the creed, which is on page five, so if you'd like to stand... <coughs> I apologise for rambling a bit in that, but I didn't prepare it. <laughs> I relied on the Lord. So we say together the words of the Creed. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Now, have we got a, an intercessor with us today? Ah, Mark, excellent. Right, so Mark's going to come out and lead us in our prayers. Or well, we can do it from there, Mark, don't have to come out. So please sit. response today will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Sometimes, with the dawning of every new day, we can find ourselves taking certain things for granted. Lord, please give us an awareness of the great gifts that you have provided for us. Even before church this morning, we will have used your gifts of clean water to drink and wash ourselves, food for our breakfast and clothes to wear. Father, we ask you to help us to focus and pray for all those in the world who do not have such simple necessities and for whom waking up each morning provides a series of challenges, often simply to stay alive. We pray for the estimated 30 million that are currently experiencing alarming hunger, 
severe levels of food insecurity and malnutrition. We pray for those suffering in eastern Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia, Yemen, Malawi and Syria and all countries that struggle for the basic necessities. We also pray for those locally who live below the poverty line and ask you to bless all the volunteers who work in our local food banks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. <clears throat> Father, we pray for the church around the world and ask you that you give strength to your church leaders, especially in areas where it is hardest to follow you. We pray for our fellow Christians in Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan and Eritrea, and all countries where Christians experience persecution. May you give them resilience, protect them, and show them the way in their wilderness. Lord, we also pray for the churches of our benefice, for Bishop Gooley, for Sue and Max, and all those who work as part of the benefice and diocese teams. May you continue to give them the compassion, strength, and leadership to continue their fantastic work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for our NHS, for scientists and volunteers that have helped us during the current pandemic. As we make progress with COVID-19 in the UK, please help us focus on those countries still suffering severe outbreaks. We pray for those in India and Brazil and all countries where numbers of cases are rising, often leaving hospitals without beds and oxygen. We pray that you will guide the leaders of these nations and also the leaders of other nations to enable them to assist with much needed help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our Queen as she returns to her duties while continuing to mourn the loss of her husband, Prince Philip. May you continue to give her strength and comfort at this difficult time. We also pray, dear Lord, for all those suffering bereavement or sickness locally. We pray for Angela, Colin and family, June and family, Suzanne P, Nick T, Reverend Brenda, Jan C, Moira, Ivy, Maureen D, Pat W, Di B, Margaret C, Steve J following his surgery, Susie, Richard, Dottie and her family. And we take a moment to think and pray for those we know personally who are in need of our prayers at the moment. May they all rest in the comfort of your loving arms, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for our families and for our family life. Lord, continue to guide us as we teach our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Help us to pass on your teachings in order that they themselves, in time, will continue to spread your message of love to others. We pray for our church family, that you help us to focus on inclusivity within our church. Help us to continue to see everyone simply as one of your children, regardless of gender, colour, race, sexuality or disability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we leave church today and return to our daily lives, remind us that you have given us two hands. Help us to use one to help ourselves and the other to help others. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. 
touch me and see. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now we're going to, uh, and we can say it out loud. Dawn, are you going to come and stand here so you, I'll stand out of the way here so you can lead the signing of the peace. Ready? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Dawn? Peace be with you. Peace be with anybody who's looking this way. <laughs> and peace be with those who are not. <coughs> um, I think we have a hymn here. Oh, here we are. Yes, we do have a hymn here. Um, and I'm not going to be able to say it out loud. So perhaps I can pass that on to somebody else to read for us. Uh, do sit down, please. I'll go back to you. Find the list of hymns. It is by the Lord of the Sea and Sky. You see, this is the hymn where I set everything up for the communion. So I may be able to do two things at once sometimes, but reading a hymn and setting up at the same time is not really easy. So, Ron, you're behind me. Do you think you can do that? Oh, oh yes, it is. Uh, by the Lord of Sea and Sky. That's the one, isn't it, Jim? Yes. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin. My hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will hear my light to them? Who shall I send? going to use prayer 2, which you'll find on page 8. <coughs> you remain seated if you don't have to The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. 
You give us your love, even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You make us all wonderfully different to join with the angels to praise you by saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son, and he gave his life for us on the cross and showed us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave you thanks and broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his death, his risen life, as you feed us with these gifts and send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with St Mary, St Peter, St Paul, St Giles and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now then, I think Ron's suggestion was the right one, so I'm going to move among you, as it were, and nip and bring you your communion. So please do stay where you are. If you wish to stand when I come there to receive, by all means do that, or stay, I don't mind. Um, I'm going to start with the, the ones behind me. First of all, we'll do a blessing.
sorry about this use of technology, it's just the easiest way to, for me to get things done this morning. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in His way, to rejoice in His truth, and to share His risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. You'd like to stand if you can for the blessing of this message. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon all of you, be among you, remain with you, and those you love, now and always. Amen. 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 So go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And I'm going to read you one last hymn. Ah, Lord for the years. Lord for the years. I'm not going to read it all. Oh, you can sit down. I'm not going to read it all because it's very long, actually. <laughs> your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. Lord, for that word, the word of life which fires us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains rebukes us and inspires us. Lord of the world, receive your people's praise. Lord, for ourselves in living power, remake us. Self on the cross and Christ upon the throne. Past and behind us, for future, take us. Lord of our lives, to live for Christ alone.